This is a live episode of Unspoken Words recorded at Telltale's event at the Rum Bar on Killigrew Street in Falmouth. <laughs> the other day, my friend Dave said to me, time you got your house in order as we sat in the chaos of my kitchen. Without saying anything, I wondered what Dave was thinking exactly. My house's order was a bit eccentric, I guess, a bit kind of guy thingamy, a bit teenager's bedroom kind of atmosphere, but overall it seemed fine. It was still standing. It wasn't about to collapse into a heap of its constituent parts. Maybe Dave was trying to be deep for once, more philosophical than practical, reaching the interpretive heights of what life is all about in the same way that he can sometimes deconstruct an opening half of football into its finer nuances of rhythm, pace, and refereeing decisions. The kind of incisive commentary that makes having to watch millionaires fight over a ball without using their hands almost seem worthwhile. (laughs) Then again, maybe Dave was alluding to history. The house, its history, its present its future, its context in the natural order of things. Perhaps he meant its evolution through time, what they call entropy. Which means that like all things, my house and its order will gradually decline into disorder, organically deconstruct over time as the things that bind it together. The bricks, the brack, the nails, the cracks, the screws, the loose, the wood, the worm, the dry, the rot, the roof, the leak, the door, the squeak, everything will come unhinged, no matter what I throw at it, to keep entropy at bay. The house, like the rest of the universe around it, will disintegrate over time back into the nothing from whence it came. But don't panic, that's still relatively far, far away. Billions of years have to pass before this cosmic documentary ends and the credits roll up on that final episode of existence in the far, far distance we call the future. And in case you were wondering, you won't be able to catch it later on iPlayer if you miss it. (laughs) Anyway, while I was thinking about all of this, I was simultaneously making Dave a cup of tea. In effect, I was doing several things at once in what I guess could be described as a kind of guy form of multitasking. (laughs) I say this because there is a dominant cliché that multitasking is a a woman thing, like periods. (laughs) And while you shouldn't be gender specific in this day and age, all that, you know, women are from Venus and men are from Uranus bollocks. (laughs) Sorry, sorry, I meant Mars, obviously, not Uranus. And I shouldn't have said bollocks either. (laughs) Shit. (laughs) What I mean is, Guy multitasking is more nurture than nature, more a culturally modeled thing than genetically inherent sort of behavior, like masturbating or hogging the television remote. Guy multitasking goes something like this. Thinking about one thing while doing something else inspires the guy mind to marvel at the way the human body can simultaneously fulfill a physical function on the one hand while thinking about something completely different on the other. By then, of course, the multitasking guy mind has been distracted from whatever stroke of genius it was thinking of by the thought of marveling at its own ability to think while doing whatever it was the guy body was doing at the same time in the first place. Where was I? (laughs) I was making tea. Anyway, with the kettle steaming over before switching itself off, I took a carton of milk out of the fridge. I poured two portions into the mugs, after which I put the milk back in the fridge on the shelf reserved for my flatmate's foodstuffs. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Dave was looking through the newspaper I had bought for the crossword page. And as I poured water over the milky tea bags in the cup... I said, Dave, listen, now I don't know what you mean by order in respect of my house, but Dave interrupted me. Have you got any more of those biscuits, he said, filling in a line of my crossword. Then he stared up at the ceiling and chewed meditatively, 
meditatively. Did I say that twice now? Meditatively. What is that? What is that? That's not even a word, you stupid. God damn it, wake up. Everybody's watching you. <laughs> then he stared up at the ceiling and chewed meditatively on the end of my pen, <laughs> pretending not to be watching me while I searched for the biscuits. And I said, Okay, hang on, Dave. I could feel his eyes were clocking where I kept my cookie stash as I fumbled around in the cupboard under the sink. A part of me resented the idea of giving him any more biscuits. He'd already hoovered up a small plateful before I'd even poured the tea. Besides, I only had one pack. And one of my few guilty pleasures over many years of struggle as a writer of nil repute... <laughs> is to eat as much as an entire packet of biscuits by myself while watching serious television like Strictly on Ice or <laughs> X Facts of Life, Celebrity Jungle Book, <laughs> or I'm in a port loo get me out of here! <laughs> I can distract myself from my work, I can relax, I can reflect, I can be a fly on the wall on the psychological challenges that we human beings can overcome, especially when we human beings happen to be B-grade celebs who pretty much want for pretty much nothing except more airtime so they can keep getting more work being B-grade celebs. <laughs> anyway, decorum and a sense of feeling trapped by a world of polite convention meant I just couldn't bring myself to lie to my friend. Like, you know what, Dave? Feeding you, nourishing you, Keeping you and our special friendship alive means the world to me. But I gave my last biscuit to the neighbor who just split with their life partner. I don't know whether that should be half-life partner. Or maybe this is no life for me, partner. Or get a life, partner. Anyway, she'd lost the cat she inherited from a recently departed mother who, as it turns out, adopted her and just got back from the funeral to find that her koi carp had asphyxiated in, in the pond while she was away. So sorry, Dave. I have no more biscuits for you. <laughs> yeah, but I can't bring myself to lie like that. Equally, I can't find the strength to tell Dave what I really think, which is, you come round here... You stick my pen in your mouth, you read my paper, you do my crossword, you pessimistically pontificate about life as if you're a magnet for all the negative energy in the universe, and you feed off the misery of others, as well as their food. So, guess what, Dave? Even if you were to confess your sins of cynicism and beg my biscuit-owning forgiveness, I wouldn't give you another crumb. Not a smidge, not a speck, not a pinch of cracker dust, because the truth is, Dave, you've got to learn you can't always get what you want. <laughs> but of course, I didn't say any of that. I didn't say a word. I stifled my chaotic anger under my orderly stiff upper lip and soldiered on. I swilled the tea bags in the cups, I squeezed them dry, and tossed them into the sink. And for a while, the silence between us, that eerie, I hope you've noticed my suppressed yet justified anger, Dave, <laughs> kind of silence, went uninterrupted as much as it went unnoticed. Time passed. Dave continued to fill in my crossword without offering any clues <laughs> or conversation. In fact, the only noise for a while was the sound of him chewing on my plastic pen which you could hear crackling between his teeth. Dave worked out an anagram on his own. I drummed my fingers on the breakfast table and coughed several times without getting any attention. Then I heard a noise from next door. I could hear their dog being let out to play in their backyard. A small confined rectangle of space comprised entirely of timber decking where the dog would regularly be let out to play. <laughs> play being a euphemism for hyperactive Fido's penchants for chewing a plastic cola bottle to pieces before doing his business. <laughs> Another 
euphemism thing for, you know what? Who knows how that's going to sound? That's, that's great. That's great. Okay, okay, you can stop being the dog now. That's great. Thank you all. For, I'll tell you what. Let's have a little audience applause. For I'm just talking while I try to find my place. Bear with me here. From our kitchen, you have a clear view of the neighbor's little decked-out back garden. You can watch Fido play amongst the piles of his own business, scattered around the wooden deck, amongst which he thrashes and tosses his plastic bottle or anything else he can lay his teeth on, for that matter. Inevitably, he steps and skids amongst the lumps of business deposited around the wooden patio as he plays out his dog world struggle with an inanimate, poo-smeared pop bottle. <laughs> Contemplating this, my imagination seeks to make order from the chaos. Cups of tea, dog poo. So, wishing I were elsewhere, I resign myself to the order of things and yield to what I realize is inevitable. Dave, I say, would you like a biscuit? I offer up the pack. He takes two, <laughs> dunking them into his cup where they disintegrate immediately, making cookie soup. The biscuits had gone soft because I'd left the open packet in the damp cupboard. They lay hidden behind the bottles of bleach, surface cleaner, and ammoniated window spray <laughs> that I'd bought after my first New Year's Eve here, when I drunkenly resolved, among other things, to maintain order and keep entropic chaos at bay with a routine of home maintenance and regular hygiene. And it might have worked if I'd been focused enough, but my list of New Year's resolutions were more mission statement than <laughs> contractual obligation. My resolutions included learning a second language, jogging, yoga, <laughs> To be more politically active, instead of voting liberal all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, and figuring out what that blue button on the free view remote is for. <laughs> so, on day two of my New Year Zero, I went shopping with my list of resolutions and bought a selection of new age, new man, new order, anti-entropy cleaning products, and, as a reward for me, biscuits. <laughs> which have lain forgotten in the back of the cupboard along with all the unopened dust-gathering cleaning products. I sipped at my tea as I was about to make a point. I flourished a damp biscuit in the air, and just then, without even looking up from the newspaper, Dave said, Oh, what I mean about getting your house in order is your tax return. Look, there's a full-page ad here that says the deadline is noon tomorrow, and that's online. Then Dave said, Oh, look, getting your house in order is just a turn of phrase, you know. It's an aphorism, a little phrase that contains a general truth. Here, I'll show you. Give me a biscuit. <sighs> Another biscuit. He's had two more than me already, but there was no way out. Not without churning the whole concept of social order into chaos and anarchy. Okay, he says. See this biscuit? And he stood over the sink, and he scrunched it in his fist letting the biscuit dust filter through his clenched hand like sand through an hourglass. It fell in a neat pile that started to soak up the water in the base of the sink. See that? He said all-knowingly. Yeah, I said. I see the utter waste of an entire biscuit. Don't you know people are starving all over the world, Dave? Have you no shame? Have you no sense of guilt? Do you have any idea... How lucky you are to live this life of luxury with my biscuits. Okay, 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 he said. Take it easy. Don't get all Bob Geldof on me. I'm showing you an aphorism, okay? He pointed into the sink. See that? Yes. That is the way the cookie crumbles. <laughs> and with that, he wiped his hands together, poured the rest of his tea down the sink, washing away the remains of the biscuit with it. Entropy, he said. Everything falls apart, is what it means. But look, thanks for the tea. i got to scoot. I've got my own tax return to sort out. And, oh, listen, I'm sorry about your pen. I've been chewing it to death here. And I said, oh, no worries, Dave. You can keep it. I found it under the fence in the back garden this morning, actually. <laughs> anyway, my name is Mac Dunlop, and I'm sorry about the mess. But thanks for listening, and bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>